All right. So thank you, Olina, for intro. I will give a little bit of introduction to my company. Uh, we are Vultra, a cybersecurity company from Prague, which works exclusively with the financial industry. We are on the market for, for the past eight years or so, and uh, through partnerships, we gained over 550 references, mostly in the United States and Brazil. Uh, we are currently on five continents. I will jump right in with my single message for today. And if I have one assignment, let's kill SMS OTP as authentication method. That's something that is bugging me so much because currently over half of uh, the banks in Central European regions still use SMS OTP as the primary authentication uh, technique for multi-factor authentication. And if we look worldwide, for example, to the United States, there are still banks who log in customers just based on the social security number, right? So no second factor at all. So SMS OTPs are terrible in every single way. Uh, they are tragically insecure for the first. Uh, phishing is something that we all know. In the Czech Republic, this is currently quite a devastating type of attack where customers can rewrite SMS OTP, and so they do. That's basically the point of the attack. If you look at Hungary, for example, there is a wave of SIM swapping attacks where uh, telcos are essentially performing insufficient KYC, issuing SIM cards to illegitimate attackers instead of real users. Then there is Android malware. It's actually perfectly legal in the Android ecosystem to read the SMS OTP, and uh, you can do it either through SMS OTP permission or through accessibility features. And finally, Telco infrastructure is also a bit legacy because you can see that uh, they either do not transfer SMS encrypted and they definitely do not store them encrypted. Um, actually, people at uh, telco uh, companies in the Czech Republic can read your SMS messages if they choose to. Uh, that's not all. Let's continue with terrible things about SMS OTP because half of you are still using it based on poll that we are currently running. They are borderline non-compliant. Uh, according to PSD2, they are in a very gray area because it's really difficult to implement SMS OTPs correctly to match all requirements on strong customer authentication. For the customers, they are also not very convenient. They are hard to read. Customers need to find the code in the OTP. They typically do not read the rest of the message, which is important for understanding the context of the operation. And if they manage to read the SMS OTP, it's actually hard to use it. They need to rewrite it, and they make typos, and authentication fails just because they make typos. And finally, they are quite costly. If you look at SMS OTP costs, it takes quite a lot of budget. So as we are piling on disadvantages of SMS OTPs, uh, we can see that it doesn't really take a genius to realize there has to be a better way to do things, obviously. And my message is just use a mobile token. It's really simple. I will show you how. Uh, just use a mobile app. It's secure. It's compliant. You can make it in a very user-friendly manner. It can be very cost-efficient. I will show you some cost-savings case studies that we had. And mainly, and this is something that I appreciate quite a lot, it provides something I call branded user experience. Customers actually can see your brand during the authentication process and enforce trust to your uh, organization and your applications. So the important part of making the application work is onboarding. It, it is really difficult, and we had this chicken egg problem here, to actually run SMS OTP in parallel with mobile application. Typically, you would onboard uh, the application through a QR code or something like that. To establish QR code, you need some other authentication methods, typically SMS OTP, which is you know, kind of a chicken egg problem in this. So you need to have digital onboarding flow for existing and new customers. We actually call onboarding uh, the experience of getting to your application. And uh, what we currently implemented for one of the major banks here that uh, I already disclosed a little bit uh, is access within five minutes. You can really do it very quickly, mobile only, in a user-friendly way. And it kind of uh, connects to the previous presentation related to a check of personal ID and facial biometrics. That's something that is essentially uh, mandatory for the process to work. We actually covered this on a webinar with Olina a couple uh, weeks ago. So I recommend to review the webinar. 
Finally, this, or, or the second phase is user authentication. Unlike with SMS messages, your customers can actually see what they approve. They can actually uh, understand the context and everything is implemented in compliant and uh, uh, user-friendly manner. Next thing, next benefit is that you can actually implement mobile security so you can fight with some of the threats such as mobile malware because you can embed it proactively in the mobile application. Uh, I think that uh, mobile malware in the Czech context was the big problem in 2019 when we have uh, had a wave of mobile malware in the beginning of the year and uh, you can efficiently eliminate it with just uh, embedding antivirus feature into the application. So what we typically hear with our customers is that this is all nice, but it is too much work. It's difficult, new mobile application, new technologies, everything. But I wanna argue that implementing this mobile token functionality is about as difficult as implementing uh, SMS OTP authentication. It's actually really simple. If you look at SMS OTP infrastructure, and technically, it's, that's a little bit of a basic architectural diagram. Uh, you have some digital channels that you currently use, like the internet banking, then you have uh, some telco infrastructure that uh, you use for sending the SMS OTP codes. And uh, finally, the user is rewriting the codes back to your digital channels. And with mobile token, it's the same. You still have your digital banking channels. You have uh, some mobile token infrastructure hosted in cloud or on-premise. And you deliver everything through push notifications and, and the users are simply confirming the operation. So if you look at the differences, it's really it's really not much of a difference. And uh, it's mainly because all these types of solutions currently are becoming heavily commoditized. This was new thing uh, for most of the companies two years ago. Currently, it's uh, simple to deploy, easy to make. Uh, I am just uh, thinking about how, how time works now, because if I had uh, the products that we currently have two years ago, we would be kings of the market, of course. And uh, this is example how you can, for example, send a payment approval request. You can just, you know, send, oh, wait a sec, wrong part of the <laughs> stage. You can send a request to some user. It's a payment with certain attributes and uh, currency and so on. And it is then reflected in the mobile application and the approval works pretty much in a similar manner. One of the additional benefits of uh, using this type of infrastructure is that you can actually reuse the same identity components for mobile banking as well for the internet banking, uh, whether it is in your own application or a standalone authenticator app. This is uh, very much connected to the first presentation by Václav, uh, who is uh, uh, focusing a little bit more on this consolidation aspect, but this is also a part of it that you can actually consolidate everything into one relatively simple to use technology. So, uh, okay, let's suppose that I convinced you to uh, consider SMS OTPs a problematic type of authentication. There are many problems. Let's suppose that I convinced you it's simple to re-implement from SMS OTP to something else. Uh, you need to take it to the board meeting and discuss everything, so I prepared a helpful business chart. If you kind of look at authentication techniques as you know, joyful on one end and painful on the other end, and then you have cheap and expensive, sure, there are some terrible authentication methods like hardware authenticators and so on. SMS OTP is slightly better, but this is where the mobile token is actually at. So, I promised you a case study. We currently work with a large banking vendor in, in the United States. And what we did is that we looked at their cost savings. Uh, we basically looked at spendings of SMS OTP because they were using a commonly known provider called Twilio. And we computed business case so that we can achieve 60% cost savings on authentication. So just use a mobile app. If you are still primarily using SMS OTP, get rid of it. Think of a strategy how to deprecate SMS OTP and phase them out. You will have secure, compliant, user-friendly, cost-affected, branded experience during authentication instead of the nightmare that I presented in the beginning of the presentation. Thank you, that's everything for me, and uh, hopefully I pass the message.